The High Queen Xenos shrieked in agony, her tentacles flailing, green blood spraying from the gaping hole that the human Thomas had blown clean through her massive torso. She had gravely underestimated this lone warrior from the death world the Cardassians called Earth, and now her hive would pay the price. Thomas Coleman, elite space marine, had been sent on a solo infiltration mission, the fate of humanity itself resting on his armored shoulders. The Cardassians, a ruthless insectoid race, had sent a gigantic living hive ship to conquer Earth, seeking to subjugate humans before they could threaten Cardassian galactic dominance. To the Cardassians, humans were a dangerous, unpredictable species from a chaotic, violent planet. A species to be controlled or eliminated. Sneaking aboard the hive ship in a captured human vessel, Thomas found himself in a nightmare of pulsing organic walls, a stench of alien fluids, and the skittering of a billion hostile drones. He battled his way through this hellish maze, heading for Xenos's central chamber, his guns blazing, his combat skills brutally outclassing the hive-minded Cardassian soldiers that threw themselves at him. But there was more at stake than just defeating the Cardassians. Thomas discovered to his horror that human civilians had been captured, cocooned, intended to be absorbed into the hive mind. Men, women, children... Their lives and very humanity were on the line. He had to save them before it was too late and their individuality was devoured forever. The hive ship itself was a technological abomination, an obscene fusion of organic and psychic energy. It regenerated damage, its drones rising again after being cut down. The Cardassians thought this made them superior, humans but ants to be crushed under their heel. Xenos thought the same. Even as Thomas crashed into her vaulted chamber, shredding her guards, she was a skyscraper of animated flesh, her tentacles crackling with power, her mind an ocean that threatened to drown his. She informed him that humanity would be enslaved, subsumed, conquered. That resistance was futile. But she had never before faced a human like Thomas Coleman, a man who could overcome any odds, defeat any foe, even a monstrosity like her. He stood before her broken and bleeding, but unbroken in spirit. He raised his gun and looked the High Queen in her dozen eyes. You made a mistake, Xenos, he growled. You underestimated humanity, and now you and your whole stinking hive are going to pay. Thomas knew this was humanity's darkest hour, and he would be the light. Even if he had to single-handedly fight this demonic alien queen blast apart her hive, and carry every last human soul to safety on his back, he would. He wouldn't let his species fall. The Cardassians were about to learn why you should never corner a human, especially one from the world that even the cruelest corners of the galaxy rightly feared as the death world. Thomas unleashed a barrage of plasma rounds into Xenos' heaving carapace, the shots sizzling into her flesh. The queen shrieked, her psychic scream rattling Thomas's bones. Her guard drones swarmed forward, spindly limbs clasping cruel weapons, compound eyes glittering with malice. Thomas rolled behind a pulsing support beam as plasma bolts scorched the air. He was hideously outnumbered, but he'd be damned if he'd make it easy for these bastards. He popped out of cover, zeroing in on a drone's head, and squeezed the trigger. Icor splattered the walls. One down, too many to go. The Marines stalked through the labyrinthine chamber, using the twisting organic structure as cover. He'd dart out to fire on Xenos's heaving bulk or gun down an approaching drone before repositioning, always keeping on the move. The Cardassians had superior numbers, but Thomas had a human mind, honed by the USMC's grueling training. He could outthink these hive-minded drones. An opening. Thomas snatched up a fallen beam, the end sharpened to a wicked point, and hurled it like a javelin. The projectile sank deep into one of Xenos's primary eyes, drawing a shuddering bellow. Oozing vitreous splattered, the orb gone dark. The queen reeled, her psychic presence faltering. Thomas seized the chance, sprinting for the far wall where humans hung cocooned in membranous sacks. His combat blade flashed, tearing open the fleshy prisons. Men and women spilled out, blinking in confusion and fear. Thomas rallied them with a barking command. On your feet, people, 
We're in the shit, and I need you to kick some ass. Grab a weapon and fight for your lives. The chamber devolved into a frenzy of close-quarters combat, newly freed humans grappling with insectoid drones. Thomas wove through the melee, plasma rifle flaring, dropping Cardassians with pinpoint shots. A shudder ran through the chamber, the walls pulsing with renewed vigor. Xenos's ruined eye twitched, slowly regenerating. The ship was healing itself and its master. Time was running out. Thomas hissed orders to the armed humans, directing them in desperate defense. As they held the line against the drones, the Marine worked furiously to jury-rig an explosive using salvaged plasma batteries, his hands flying over the alien components. Get to the escape pods, Thomas roared to the survivors. I'll hold them off and blow this monstrosity to atoms. Move! The humans scrambled for the egress, falling back to the pod bay under Thomas's covering fire. The Queen's thunderous psychic command boomed, ordering her drones to stop the humans at any cost. Thomas shouldered through the Cardassian reinforcements flooding the chamber and charged for the core. The explosive clutched to his chest. Xenos rose up before him, her blinded face a mask of rage, her segmented limbs lashing out to seize him. The breath crushed from his lungs as Xenos lifted his struggling form, bringing him in close to her slavering mandibles. Foolish primate, she hissed in his mind, her words dripping with venom. Your struggle is meaningless. What can one human do against the inevitable? Submit and your species will be allowed to serve. Thomas locked eyes with the abomination, his fingers white-knuckled on the trigger. You still don't get it, he gasped out. Humanity will never stop fighting. Each one of us will sacrifice everything for our species and our way of life even if that means killing monsters like you. Agony shot through him as Xenos tightened her grip, his bones groaning in protest. The world grayed at the edges, but Thomas clung to consciousness with pure defiance. He bared his teeth, slamming his thumb down on the detonator. The improvised bomb ignited, a miniature sun blooming to life at the heart of the ship. The detonation ripped through the core in a maelstrom of fire and plasma, tearing Xenos apart in a spray of ruptured organs. The chamber collapsed in on itself, the ship screaming its death throes. Thomas rode the edge of the blast, searing heat rolling over him. He hit the deck, boots pounding, lungs searing as he sprinted for the lone remaining life pod. The ship disintegrated around him, explosions chasing his heels. With a final desperate leap, Thomas hurled himself through the egress an instant before the pod launched, tearing free of the imploding dreadnought. The Marine sagged against the restraints, his body a map of pain, his breath coming in ragged gasps. Through the porthole, he watched Xenos's mighty vessel break apart, fire blossoming in the void as it split into burning, irradiated fragments. The Queen's psychic death scream echoed in his mind before winking out like a snuffed candle. Thomas allowed himself a grim smile before wincing at his injuries. The battle was won, but he knew in his bones that this was just the opening salvo in a much larger war. The Cardassians would come for Earth, and he would be there to meet them. Humanity had to be ready. Thomas reached for the pod's comms, patching in to USMC command. This is Coleman, he reported, his voice rough with pain and smoke. Mission accomplished, but we've got a major situation. The Cardassians are coming in force. These hive ships have to be stopped or we'll lose everything. You need to mobilize every able body and get the fleets ready. This is going to be the fight of our lives. He sagged back, watching the pod's navigational display track their course back to human space. The war was on the horizon and Thomas knew he'd be on the front lines. The Cardassians thought they could break humanity, bring them to heel like cattle but they were about to learn the depths of human defiance and the price of underestimating the deathworlders of Earth. Thomas Coleman's escape pod tumbled through space, systems failing and life support dwindling. Just as his vision began to blur, a massive shape loomed, the USMC carrier Dreadnought. Tractor beams locked on, pulling him to safety. The moment the airlock cycled, Thomas staggered out. Medics rushed forward, but he waved them off. No time. I need to see command now. Minutes later, bruised and bloodied, 
Thomas stood before Earth's top brass in the Dreadnought's war room. Admiral Zhao eyed him skeptically. Report, Marine. Thomas took a deep breath. Sirs, we're facing an invasion by an advanced alien species called the Cardassians. They're insectoid with powerful psychic abilities and hive mind technology, and they see Earth as a threat to be eliminated. Murmurs of disbelief rippled through the room. General Owens scoffed. An alien hive mind? Sounds like science fiction, Coleman. Thomas pulled a data chip from his armor. I recorded this from the Hive Queen before I blew her to hell. He slotted it into the hollow table. A shrill, inhuman scream filled the room, followed by words that chilled them to the bone. Earth will fall. Your species will be assimilated or destroyed. Resistance is futile. Silence fell. Admiral Zhao's face hardened. What do you suggest, Marine? Send recon drones to the hive ship debris. There's intel there we need. Within hours, the drones returned with terrifying confirmation. Cardassian invasion plans, schematics of their biotech ships, details of their psychic weapons. Humanity mobilized for war. But as the first battles raged in the outer system, it became clear Earth was outmatched. Conventional weapons barely scratched the regenerating Cardassian hulls. The alien armada inexorably advanced. In a secret bunker beneath Washington, Thomas found himself summoned once more. The Joint Chiefs looked grim. Coleman, we're out of options, Admiral Zhao said. But your infiltration of their hive ship gives us an idea. We want to send you and an elite team to assassinate their leader, this Hive Imperator. Thomas nodded grimly. It's a suicide mission, but I'm in. He spent the next days recruiting the toughest Marines he knew, grizzled veterans of hellish tours on Mars and Titan, men who'd stared death in the face and spat in its eye. As they prepared to deploy, Thomas gathered his team, 20 of the meanest bastards humanity had to offer. He looked each man in the eye. Listen up, you ugly sons of bitches. We're about to board an alien mothership and kill their god emperor or whatever the fuck it is. It's going to be a nightmare in there. But remember this. We're humans. We come from the planet that scares the piss out of the whole galaxy. So let's show these hive-minded bugs what happens when you piss off the Death Worlders. Aura? A thunderous aura shook the hangar bay. Thomas grinned fairly. Mount up, Marines. We've got some Xenos to exterminate. Thomas and his elite team slipped through the void in their stolen Cardassian vessels. The massive alien armada loomed ahead, a sea of chitinous hulls filled with bioweapons. Stay frosty, Thomas growled over the comms. We're going in. They approached the flagship, a towering monstrosity that dwarfed even the largest human capital ships. Tension thrummed through the marines as they waited for the ruse to fail, for alarms to sound but the captured ship's transponder held, and they docked without incident. Once aboard, they moved with practiced stealth. The organic corridors pulsed and writhed, forcing the humans to adjust their movements constantly. They mapped as they went, building a picture of the labyrinthine interior. In a vast chamber, they found row after row of stasis pods. Alien forms floated within slowly dissolving as tendrils of Cardassian biomass wormed into their flesh. A marine retched. Thomas set his jaw. Eyes front. We've got a job to do. They fought running battles through twisting passageways, plasma bolts searing the air. Thomas led from the front, his aim unerring as he dropped drone after drone. But the ship seemed endless, and fatigue began to set in. Finally, they reached the central chamber. The Imperator's bulk filled the cavernous space, a nightmare fusion of insectoid anatomy and cruel machinery, its many eyes fixed on the intruders with inhuman malice. Now, Thomas roared, and his team opened fire. But their weapons seemed to have little effect. Psychic energy crackled, deflecting shots and crushing Marines where they stood. Half the squad fell in moments. Thomas snarled, reaching for the arcane countermeasures they'd prepared. Apotropaic wards now. The surviving Marines drew sigils in the air, chanting words that had protected humans on a hundred hellish worlds. A shimmering barrier sprang up, dulling the psychic assault. 
They lobbed the Magno chemical grenades, punching holes in the Imperator's defenses. Thomas saw his chance. Blades, go for the core! His men surged forward, jamming toxin-laced blades deep into Zarthrax's flesh. The Imperator convulsed, a psychic scream tearing through their minds. Its massive form thrashed in its death throes before rupturing in a spray of ichor and alien viscera. But even as Thomas allowed himself a moment of grim satisfaction, blast doors slammed shut. Alarms blared as the ship's automated systems engaged. They were trapped, sealed in with the Imperator's remains. Thomas looked at his battered team, down to just a handful of warriors. Outside, the Cardassian Armada still threatened Earth. He checked his dwindling ammo, considering their options. All right, you ugly bastards, he growled. Looks like this is where we make our stand. Let's show these bugs what humans are made of. His marines nodded grimly, readying their weapons as the sounds of approaching drones echoed through the chamber. The alarms blared, their shrill wails echoing through the organic corridors of the Cardassian flagship. Thomas and his remaining marines stood their ground weapons at the ready, as the ship shuddered around them. Listen up, Thomas barked, his voice raw from smoke and exertion. This bucket's going down, but we're taking it out on our terms. Private Rodriguez, his armor scorched and pitted, glanced at the pulsing walls. Sir, what's happening? Thomas allowed himself a grim smile. That pathogen we unleashed, it's eating this ship alive. Now we finish the job. He laid out the plan quickly, Overload the plasma reactor, take out the flagship, and cripple the invasion force. The Marines nodded, faces set with grim purpose. They charged through twisting passageways, the organic matter beneath their boots squelching and disintegrating. Cardassian guards, their bodies already showing signs of infection, fired wildly. Thomas and his team cut them down with practiced efficiency. As they neared the reactor chamber, a horrific sight stopped them cold. Zarthrax, or what was left of it, blocked their path. The once mighty Imperator was now a writhing mass of corrupted flesh and metal, its many eyes glowing with madness and pain. Light it up! Thomas roared. The Marines opened fire, their weapons spitting death. Thermobatic waves seared alien flesh while bio warheads ate through chitin and armor. Zarthrax screamed, a psychic shriek that threatened to shatter their minds. Thomas pushed through the pain, leading the charge. Keep firing! Don't let up! For agonizing minutes, they poured everything they had into the monstrosity. Slowly, inexorably, Zarthrax began to falter. With a final gurgling cry, it collapsed into a steaming pile of necrotic sludge. Thomas wasted no time. Move! To the reactor! They burst into the core a chamber pulsing with eldritch energies that made their skin crawl. Thomas watched in horror as the radiation tore through his men. One by one they fell, their bodies disintegrating before his eyes. Alone, his own flesh burning away, Thomas staggered to the control panel. With trembling hands, he input the overload sequence. Alarms screamed as the reactor began to destabilize. Thomas turned, facing the remains of Zarthrax, his body was failing, but his spirit burned bright with defiance. He opened his mouth, teeth bared in a final snarl of triumph. That's what you get when you threaten a human death with... The words died in his throat as the reactor detonated. In an instant, Thomas Coleman and the Cardassian flagship were consumed by a cataclysmic explosion that lit up the system. The shockwave tore through the Cardassian armada. Ships were vaporized or sent spinning out of control. Those that survived scattered in panic, their hive minds shattered. On the bridge of the USMC Dreadnought, Admiral Chen watched the explosion fade. The comms officer turned to him, voice hushed. Sir, telemetry confirms. The Imperator's flagship is gone, along with Thomas Coleman and his team. Chen nodded, his face a mask of stone. Enter their names in the record. They died as they lived. As Marines... He paused, then made one final decision. Initiate antimatter bombardment of the area. We can't risk any Cardassian spores surviving. As the Dreadnought's weapons powered up, Chen allowed himself a moment of reflection. Coleman's sacrifice had bought them time, 
but the war was not nearly finished. Humanity would mourn its heroes, then steel itself for the battles to come. The antimatter strikes lanced out, scouring the battlefield clean. In their wake, only silence remained, and the eternal void of space, indifferent to the struggles of those who traversed its depths. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.